What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Side of Attack once again, and in spite of all of the crazy death cross news coming across Bitcoin today, we're still going to talk some mining, and in particular, we're going to talk about mining Ravencoin. If you guys haven't heard of it, stick around. I'll go into a little bit of detail on what it is, and then I'm going to show you how to mine it on not only Windows, but also we're going to take a look at Simple Mining and Hive OS. so stick around. <laughs> Welcome back. So everybody keeps asking me what I think about Ravencoin. The question comes up everywhere at this point, and it's kind of the miners saving grace to the crypto crashing and all that sort of thing and trying to come back up with some sort of alternate coin to mine to go ahead and get your profits back. Now, I don't think in particular Ravencoin is that, but what I do think about Ravencoin is that it's a very interesting project for... Uh, a couple reasons and that it has a lot of promise. Now a little bit of backstory on Ravencoin is essentially it's being developed by some of the original developers of Bitcoin and it wants to bring everything back to the basics. This means you're not going to see any pre-mine or any crazy stuff like that and it's pretty transparent. However, the transparency isn't very detailed as of yet because their white paper pretty much covers one thing and that's the biggest selling point for Ravencoin in and of itself. In the recent years, the biggest coins that have popped up have all been ASICs resistant. Now, ASICs resistance means that you're not going to be able to mine it as easily or create as easily an ASICs, which is an application specific program for that particular algorithm. Now, the approach that Ravencoin uses, as opposed to what the others have done, is that it doesn't just have a single algo. Yes, it is X16R, but that 16 actually means that it is 16 separate algorithms all rolled into one and then it's randomized by the last 16 characters of the previous chain. This makes it extremely difficult to program or create ASICs miners for and therefore is really really its big selling point here. The other notable things about this particular algorithm is that if somebody did develop an ASICs miner for it, it's very plug and play as far as algorithms. They can remove an algorithm, they can add a new algorithm, or they could just change the order up, making the ASIC uh, once again irrelevant for that particular coin. And so this is kind of the saving grace of, a, of, of cryptocurrency right now, uh, at least if we're speaking from the terms of the ASICs resistant good old boys with the GPUs and the CPUs, which is notable because what you want to be able to do is bring everything to the consumer base on a general general level to where you're not having just one specific company, <clears throat> Bitmain, creating all of the wealth for all of the miners. And this is just basically the argument against any sort of, you know, monopoly on the network. So without further ado, I'm going to hop in over here and you come join me and we're going to take a look at how you can go ahead and get started mining it yourself. Alrighty, so the first place I'm going to point you towards is going to be the Bitcoin Talk. While the main website has some information, it's pretty lackluster, and I'm going to go ahead and refer you to here for all of the resources that you need, including the coin specs and links directly to the white paper, and just a typical overview. Of course, also always go check the last pages in the thread to see if something sketchy is going on, or if the coin's kind of taken some sort of down spiral or the devs have left or something along those lines. Usually what I'll do is I'll scroll to the bottom and then just click the last page. Make sure everything still looks on the up and up since the last time I checked just to make sure I'm not getting into anything scammy because that's pretty popular these days and probably honestly part of the reason why a lot of the crashes are happening. Now if we scroll down over here you will see the algorithm X16R You'll see the block times one minute and the block reward is 5,000 Raven. The total coin supply is 21 billion. There's no founder's reward. There's hell no ICO. And here's your RPC port. So there's all of the information you need as far as that goes. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the wallets. It does offer a paper wallet, which we will not go through a how-to on that today. 
We're just going to show you guys the regular wallet, but I highly recommend looking into the paper wallet so much so that if you really, really need help, let me know in the comment section below and maybe I'll just make a completely separate video on how to do a paper wallet for Ravencoin in particular. And it looks like they've moved the actual releases. So once you go there, don't get too confused and just click the releases portion right here and it'll take you to a list of all the wallets. Today we're going to take a look at the Windows wallet. So I'm going to download that for you all real quick and you can just save the file. At this point I'm just going to open it up and we are going to cut it and then I'm going to give you guys a good old look at my mess of a file explorer. Don't pay too much attention to it. I'm just going to do a new folder here and name it RVN for Ravencoin. This is for demonstration purposes, so I'm not going to actually be using this current wallet. Right click and you can either just say extract all if it's in Windows. If not, go grab yourself 7-zip and install it and you can use it. It'll pop up just the same as here. And we're going to extract the files here and click OK. Now that we've done that, we can just pop in and run the Raven QT. It'll give you a little option here of using a custom data directory. I will have to because I am really, really full on my home drive and I have not cleaned it out. So I'm just going to install it right here into the Raven coin section. Your Windows security alert will come up and just make sure you allow it. And then at this point, you'll be presented with it syncing the blockchain. I'm going to hide this so we can go over what we need to get out of here. Always, 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 before you do anything else, click settings and click encrypt wallet and type password of your choice. You'll click OK. It'll give you a little warning and then it will close and finish the encrypting process. And then that point you can go ahead and reopen. So I'm going to hide this again and we're going to go get our wallet address. You do not need to be synced to get your wallet address, but you need to be synced to accept, of course, your payment. I always create a minor or mining label and then just say request payment and it'll give you your address right here. Your address is right in this section and we're just going to click copy so we have it for later. So that is going to cover the wallet. Let's talk about the mining. Since most of y'all are probably on Windows, let's just go ahead and straight hop into the mining portion for Windows. It's going to be the most difficult way to do it if you don't already have, of course, something like Hive or SMOS or Simple Mining already installed. If you need a how-to on how to use a simple Mining or uh, Hive OS, I'll leave links up in the corner for you to check out. And once you go through that process, then you can hop on and get yourself off Windows. Now we're going to go ahead and get ourselves into the CC Miner. I'm going to cut it and once again go to Raven and then I'm just going to, within Raven, I'm going to create a Miner folder here. You can copy me if that's how you prefer. And then once again, right click and extract. And then you'll be presented with the CC miner, an example batch file, and the README. We're going to be taking a look at the example batch file. If you do not currently have folder options enabled to see these, you're going to want to go in and click show hidden folders, and then make sure that you click show hidden files and folders, and then uncheck hide extensions for known file types and click apply. And this should give us that dot bat that we need to see. Some people were having troubles with this in a previous how-to, so I wanted to cover that for y'all. And it was not letting them edit. Most likely it was because of this extension. So now that we have that extension visible, we're going to right click and say edit. And this is going to be the batch file that we're going to configure. At this point, we're going to want to go ahead and find ourselves a pool. If you scroll down here, you'll find all of the pool recommendations. I'm currently on this mining panda site, so we're going to go ahead and use it again. It's a very simple uh, YIMP front end. The only problem with the YIMP front ends is it does appear for a lot of people. We had a lot of trouble keeping it up and running, and a lot of people do go down often. So make sure it's a pool that you know has been up for a little while. This one's been up for long enough and has been working for me that I'll go ahead and recommend it. And what we're going to be looking for here is all of the information to go ahead and start mining. What we want is going to be 
the website. So we're looking for this stratum. In particular, we're looking for the URL here. So I'm just gonna right click and copy, go back to my batch file and paste it in right here. The next thing we'll need is the port. So if you actually come on over to the right side, you'll see the X16R and then you'll find the port right below there. So we're gonna right click and copy that. And the port is gonna be after the colons right here or after the colon. Make sure if it adds any unwanted spaces, you remove them. The next section is dash U, which is going to be your wallet address. So let's go back to our wallet. We can double click here and click copy address. And then once we've copied the address, we're gonna come here, highlight that and just paste over it. The rest of these, uh, <laughs> the rest of these, we're gonna just go ahead and leave as is and do a control S to save, or you can click file and click save. Now the other thing you may want to do is rename it. Uh, a lot of times I'll right click and rename and I'll say RVN for the algo I'm trying to mine. And then I will go in and do the uh, pool. So I'll do Panda, for example, and rename it like that. The last thing that I might have forgotten to check is the algo. If you get a branch that does not have this pre-configured, which if you get it from the Bitcoin talk, it will. Um, but if you don't in the dash A, which is going to be for the algorithm is something other than X 16 R, you need to make sure you change that. So once that's done, you're ready to go ahead and run your miner. In particular, right now I am running on a GTX 1080 Ti and we will probably have to go ahead and cancel it here shortly uh, because we are recording on the same uh, process. As you can see, we're getting about 1,255 kilohash a second. This is unoptimized by the way and primarily used for gaming and editing so on. To cancel it, use Control C. If you have issues and the screen comes up black and then just goes away right away, right click your batch file and then go back into edit and at the very end put a space and type in pause then save the file and run the batch file again. This will prevent the command prompt or the command line interface from closing out on you and it will display an error. So that's the number one thing for troubleshooting when using a miner on Windows. Don't ever forget the pause. Now that that's complete, let's talk about simple mining. So if you don't have a simple mining account already, you can come here and register and just go check out my how to use simple mining video for a quick start and we'll get you going there. You're gonna go ahead and log in and I've set up two sample rigs for us to take a look at, one in here and one in Hive OS. Now keep in mind, simple mining is $2 a rig, so you will have to pay for them if you are currently using it. And as you can see here, I'm currently mining Raven or I have the group Raven. So to assign a group or to create a group, we're gonna click rig groups here. And then you're gonna click add group. Once you've clicked add group, you can go ahead and start editing. So once you've got it selected, you're just gonna wanna go down to one of the Raven options. For me in particular, I'm using the MSFT server version. This is uh, this still needs to be vetted by me to make sure I'm getting the best hash rate, but this will work and you can get up and running on Raven. The dash A is going to be your algorithm, so make sure you set it to X16R. And then the rest of this is the exact same as your config for, of course, your Windows. So you're going to go over to the pool of choice. You're going to copy the mining.site and then get the port over here from the right. Go back here and place it into here. Go get your wallet address by clicking copy address and then paste that into here. And then the dash P is just going to be X, which this particular pool doesn't require. So we're just going to leave it as X, which is just random. When you're done, you're just going to select the reload and click save. And then you should be ready to go ahead and start mining, but you'll first have to come back and assign a group. So go back to your rig list and then highlight the miner you wanna to change to Raven and click assign group and then select Raven and click save. Leave it on reload and it will reload it and you'll be good to go. 
Next, we're gonna take a look at Hive OS. If you need to look on how to install Hive OS, you can check the video that I've linked in the corner of this YouTube video. So once you've logged in, what we actually see here, I'm having some, some GPU issues and we're gonna to have to go through it again. Um, I probably have an overclock issue going on here because I do have an overclock applied. But as you can see, we have eight GT 1030s on this current rig, but we're trying to mine Raven for Nvidia right now. So let's go back. If we click rigs, we can then select wallets and then we're going to just go ahead and click new wallet. So for the wallet, I'm just going to name it Raven test since I already have one for our D wallet address. We're going to go ahead and copy that address from the wallet we just created. Oops. There we go. We're going to paste that into here. Next, we need to select the miner. So we're going to be selecting CC miner. And then for the fork, we're going to come down here and look for the RVN. That's going to be for Raven. And for the algorithm, we're going to once again scroll down and look for X16R, Raven in parentheses there. For the wallet, we're going to paste our wallet address in that we pasted up there. For the pool URL, we're going to come back here and we're going to grab this information again from the pool site. So just right click and click copy, come back to our wallet, right click and click in paste. And then we also need to add the port. So we're going to find the port once again for this particular one. We're looking at 3636. We'll come back here and paste it right there. Remove any spaces if they come in. And then that's going to be our pool URL. Next, we're going to put in our paths, which is just going to be X. We can select an overclocking profile if we'd like to assign one to this particular one. I'm not going to, and we're going to cancel out of this, but you would click OK, and then you're ready to go as far as the wallet configuration. Now there's one more step. You're going to have to go back to rigs, click edit on the rig that you want to change. Make sure you select the minor CC minor for NVIDIA and the wallet Raven. Click OK, and you're good to go. And then next you can go ahead and just click on the rig and make sure it is mining what you think it's mining. As you can see here, we are looking pretty good. Like I said, it looks like a couple are dropping off. And then if you need to go over more information like how to overclock, I have videos up on those as well that you can go check out. So to check your stats, all you're going to do is go and copy your wallet address again and then paste it into the search wallet and click submit. At this point, you'll be able to see what your balance is, what your total unpaid is, so pending balance and total paid. Now, keep in mind, if you currently have a pending balance, they run at certain intervals and there is always a minimum payout. You can usually see what the minimum payout is on the home tab. And it looks like payouts are made automatically every one hour for balances above 0.01. 4.001 on Sunday. So if your pending balance is less than 0.01, they will not pay you out on the next payout within the hour. Hope that covered everything you need to know. It looks like the battery on my camera has died. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I always appreciate your feedback and support so uh, anything you can do to support is amazing by that i mean clicking the like button leaving a comment and coming over to our discord server to help us all learn more about cryptocurrency blockchain and of course new coins like raven thanks for watching and i'll see you next tuesday